Hey guys, it's Randy with Lowbuck LS, and in this episode, we're going to uh, start looking at the 4L60E issues that uh, I started having at the end of uh, last video. But first, I wanted to say thanks. Uh, I just crossed the 500 uh, subscriber mark on the channel, so thanks to everybody who has watched and commented and subscribed, and uh, I appreciate that. And yeah, so uh, this episode. We're going to uh, be pulling the transmission out of my truck, but uh, before we do that, I uh, just wanted to show you guys what it's doing. So we'll fire up the truck and basically it has no second gear. Like I'll put it in drive and it'll uh, stay in first until it gets to 3,500 or 4,000 RPM and then it'll skip second gear altogether and shift into I'm not sure if it's third or fourth but a fairly high gear anyways um, and then if I shift into second it's basically neutral so something's smoked inside the transmission so we'll take it for a little test drive here and I'll show you what's going on okay so we'll fire up the truck here and I'll show you exactly what it does So I'm shifting into drive. Should be shifting right about now. And yeah, went up to about 4,000 and then shifted into like third or fourth gear. Might be in fourth gear now. That might have just been the converter locking up. And if I put it into second, basically like neutral so that's what the truck is doing so obviously something smoked inside the transmission so we're gonna get it home and put it up on jack stands and uh, pull the 4L60E transmission out right in my driveway so we'll see you back at home Hey guys, so I got the truck back in the driveway. Um, there is one thing I should probably address because I'm probably going to get a bunch of comments about it. I know a bunch of you guys are going to say, why bother messing with the 4L60E? Why not just swap a 4L80E in there? And the reason is I'm still on a real tight uh, crunch as far as both time and money. And, uh, you know, to pull this transmission and rebuild it is probably going to be you know, a $200 rebuild kit and a $100 shift kit. Whereas if I do a 4L80E swap, I've got to go to pick and pull and get the 80E and that's going to be 135 bucks. I'm probably still going to want to do the uh, rebuild kit and shift kit in it. So there's another 300. Um, and then I'm going to need to either spend time or money either buying a cross member or uh, fabricating a cross member or modifying the stock one and then I'm going to need a drive shaft and uh, the other issue I'm going to have is I'm going to have to move within the next month or so so I need this truck uh, functional before we move um, so it's going to be quicker for me to just pull this 4L60E and uh, throw a rebuild kit and a shift kit in it and throw it back in and hopefully have it back on the road in a week or two here and eventually i will uh, either do the 4l 80e swap with a converter or i might even do a turbo 400 but for now now that we're in the driveway here we'll uh, get this thing up on jack stands and figure out how to take out a transmission okay so we're getting ready to pull the transmission here or get ready to anyways so Initially, I had my truck on jack stands out in the driveway there and I posted a picture of it like that on the sloppy mechanics page and I got my computer up here. There's a picture of what it was like a day or two ago up on jack stands and got a lot of attention on sloppy. You can see right now it's got 445 reactions and 348 comments and about 95% of those comments were calling me a dumbass and saying I'm gonna die for trying to pull a transmission with my truck on jack stands on a slow play pad. So decided to uh, listen to everybody, 
So we've got it on these ramps in the garage with a block of wood behind each tire. So uh, now we're going to uh, get ready to drain the fluid. So uh, I think first of all, I'm going to pull the, uh, actually I'll open the hood and uh, show you what I'm going to do there. Okay, so to drain the fluid out, we're going to pull this uh, tranny cooler line that goes into the radiator just above the lower rad hose. And I'm going to put a piece of plastic tubing on it and put it into a bucket and start the truck for a minute or so. And that will get most of the fluid out because if you only drain the pan, you're only going to get like half the fluid out and the rest will still be in the converter and stuff. So. We're gonna do this first and then we'll drain the pan. Okay, so I got that uh, tranny cooler line disconnected from where it goes into the radiator and a piece of uh, vinyl 3 8 tubing stuck onto the end of it. And that runs through the grill. And then I've got it zip tied into a pan here. So now I'm gonna start up the truck and it should pump pump a bunch of uh, transmission fluid into that pan there. So we'll fire up the truck and see if that works. So I basically filled this pan Two thirds of the way full, and you could see there it was starting to pump some air bubbles. So I shut the truck off. So, and that fluid is just black. It's not even red anymore. It looks pretty, pretty disgusting for transmission fluid. And I had just changed it not too long ago. So, definitely something cooked in that transmission. So now that we've got a bunch of fluid out that way. Now we're gonna go underneath the truck and uh, drain the pan the normal way. Okay, so I guess we're not gonna drain this pan the normal way because I tried and basically rounded off the corners on that bolt on the transmission pan. So I guess I'm going to pull the pan and drain the rest of the fluid that way. So I already got my uh, crossover pipe out here to make room for getting the pan off. So we'll pull this pan off. Okay, so I got the pan off. The transmission fluid looks pretty gross. It's almost like a, it's definitely not red like it's supposed to be. It's kind of a root beer brown. So I'll basically dump this fluid out of the pan and uh, check for any metal filings or whatever and then I'll probably put the pan on back on with a couple bolts just to give me something to jack to when I put my transmission jack under there. So we'll get this fluid drained out of the pan and as I'm draining it out you can see a lot of black stuff in the bottom of the pan there. I'm thinking that's probably clutch material okay just going to take a quick minute to show you guys how I'm going to keep my bolts and parts organized here as I'm taking this transmission apart so I got this basically a parts bin so right now the only bolts I've taken out are the pan bolts so I'm going to put them in one divider here with a sticky note that tells me where they came from so imagine uh, as we get further into it this uh, tray is going to get pretty full here but that's how I'll, how I'll keep track of what goes where and then bigger parts and pieces I'll put in this side tray here okay so I'm back under the truck again got all the oil drained out and I've got that pan on just with a couple bolts here to hold it in place so we can have a spot to uh, put the jack under. Um, next thing I'm gonna do, let me get the light where we can see it here. Uh, I'm gonna take off that nut right there 
and that's the dipstick tube for the automatic transmission. We'll take off that nut and pull the dipstick tube and then we'll put some kind of plug in there to uh, plug the hole to keep dirt from falling in there while we're messing around. Okay, now that we got that dipstick tube out, we'll uh, take off the shifter linkage and I already kind of pried it off, but you just, I stuck a screwdriver in that gap right there and then it just pops off of that. There's like a ball stud or whatever. And now back here, we gotta pull this little clip out and then compress these tabs and then the shifter cable will pull out like that. So we'll get that done. Got them tabs compressed so now we can should be able to get our shifter cable right out of there. So our shifter cable's disconnected. Okay, now that we got that shifter cable disconnected, next thing I'm gonna do is uh, pull the drive shaft. So it's just there's four bolts on the rear uh, yoke of the drive shaft where it meets the rear differential there. So we'll pull those out. And then I'm not sure if when I pull this yoke out of the transmission, if a bunch of fluid is gonna run out of there, which shouldn't because I had drained it all, but. I'm just putting a pan underneath there just in case. Okay, we got the drive shaft out and I just put the bolts and caps for the U-joint yoke or whatever back in there so I don't lose them. And no fluid did come out of the yoke there so I guess I didn't need that pan. So Now we'll go back up to the transmission and look at what we need to disconnect next. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do on the uh, driver side is take off this switch assembly off the where the shift linkage hooks up. And I think this is like your neutral safety switch and maybe it, uh, I'm not totally sure what this is, might be what um, indicates to the computer what gear you're in or something like that. But, so I'm gonna take this nut off and then take this linkage off. And there's one bolt here and one bolt that you can't see very well, kind of in behind this connector here. So we'll get this switch assembly off of here. And here's another thing you can do to keep track of what parts go with what. Like this is the nut that holds this uh, shift linkage lever onto the side of the transmission. So I just zip tied it to that part. So. Now I know that nut goes with that. Put it in our uh, parts tray here. Okay, now you can see I've got that neutral safety switch uh, off of there. Now I'm going to take off, up there there's a little bracket that uh, um, holds on this wiring harness and those fuel lines. So I'm gonna take that bracket off next. Okay, so I got that bracket disconnected that holds the fuel lines and wiring harness. So I think that's everything disconnected on the driver's side of the transmission. So now we'll move over to the passenger side and see what we got to disconnect over there. Okay, so on the passenger side here, I'm gonna disconnect this uh, connector here, which I believe is the vehicle speed sensor. And then I'm gonna Pull these two bolts and get rid of this heat shield and then up and behind there I believe is uh, the electrical uh, connectors for the transmission and then I don't know if you can see them here but the transmission cooler lines are up in there as well so disconnect that speed sensor get this heat shield out of the way and work on disconnecting the electrical connections and transmission cooler lines. Okay, so we got that uh, speed sensor connector undone. Just coming over here. We got that main electrical connector undone and to undo that, you just gotta squeeze, there's these two tabs on the side. You squeeze them together and it releases that little clip thing right there. 
And then we got our two uh, transmission cooler lines undone. So I think that's just about everything connected to the transmission. We got that park neutral safety switch off. Our, all our electrical connectors done, our transmission cooler lines done. So I think we're ready to start. Um, I guess we should get a transmission jack under there and then we can probably pull this cross member and then start pulling our uh, bolts. Oh, you know what? I'm forgetting torque converter bolts. So we'll pull that little access cover right there. Let me move a little further under the truck here. Uh, where are we at here? Right here is a access cover that uh, we should be able to get at the bolts that hold the torque converter to the flex plate or flywheel or whatever it's called on these trucks. So we'll do that, pull this plate and try to get them torque converter bolts out. Okay, so I pulled that little access cover in the bell housing and you can see the converter bolts there but you can't get at the head of it through that hole. So I think what I'm gonna have to do, oops, let me grab my light here again. Uh, where are we here? I think I'm gonna have to pull the starter. You can see those are the two bolts that I believe hold the starter in. And then I'm gonna have to pull this little black plastic access cover. And then I'm hoping I can access the converter bolts through that opening, so. First I'll go up top and uh, pull the battery cable so I don't short anything out when I uh, pull the starter out. And then we'll take that little black cover off and see if we can access the converter bolts that way. All right, so I disconnected that battery cable. Got that starter pulled out of the way as you can see. And got that dust cover off. And now you can see I can access that converter bolt there. Looks like it's some kind of, takes an Allen wrench or a Torx bit or something. So I have to figure out what kind of bit it is and get those uh, torque converter to flex plate bolts out of there. Okay, it was quite a battle, but, and I didn't, I ended up just shutting the camera off. But I got those three uh, bolts out that hold the torque converter to the flex plate. They're actually a uh, metric eight millimeter Allen wrench. Set that down there for now. <laughs> uh, they are super tight. Like I had to put a, a wrench on the end of the Allen wrench kind of as a snipe to get them out. But they are out now. So now we should be able to uh, rig up our transmission jack and uh, pull that cross member out and pull the bolts um, that hold the bolt bell housing to the engine and uh, hopefully get that transmission out of there. Okay, so we got our uh, transmission jack underneath the transmission here and got the chains wrapped around the transmission and tightened up. So now we should be able to pull this uh, cross member mount out and pull this cross member right out and then we will uh, take out the bell housing bolts and hopefully get this transmission out of here. But first we'll work on getting this cross member out. Okay, we got that truck cross member and mount out of there. So now the only thing holding that transmission in should be those bolts on the bell housing. So we'll take those out and then try and slide the transmission back and lower the trans jack down and hopefully it'll be out of here. Okay, as you can see, the transmission is out. I ended up shutting off the camera. I struggled for like three hours with bell housing bolts. So I'll show you what the issue was here. So um, right up there, if I zoom back here a bit, um, it's the bell housing bolt at the I guess it'd be the 10 o'clock position looking at the engine. It's got this bracket on it 
So it's got like a 13 millimeter nut and then a 15 millimeter uh, that's basically on top of a stud on top of a 15 millimeter bolt. And that nut was stripped out. I could turn it all I want and it would not come off. So I couldn't get that bracket off. So as you can see, I ended up just gobbing a piece of weld on there and that allowed me to uh, thread out the whole thing with but and of course it's the one that's super hard to get at like i needed like a probably still got it laying around here somewhere like three feet of extension and a universal joint to get up there so that was a huge pain to uh, get out but she's out on the floor anyways and here's a close-up view of that fastener that I fought with for three hours. So that was sorry, try and steady the camera here. And wait for the car to drive by. Um yeah, so that 13 millimeter nut that holds the bracket on was just spinning on those threads and wouldn't come off. And of course it was up in this hole right here. So super hard to get to, you need like a three foot extension. So yeah, I ended up sticking my MIG gun up in there and just tacking that nut to the threads and then spinning the whole assembly out, ended up just cutting that bracket off. So it was a huge pain, but transmission's on the bench here now, so. We're gonna wrap this one up. Next video, we'll be uh, taking apart this 4L60 and seeing what's wrong with it. So thanks for watching. We'll talk to you on the next one.